Harlander is part of our strategic transport master plan for Belfast Harbour Estate. It's an estate of 2,000 acres, represents 20% of Belfast City. Uh, and we have real pressures in terms of our development and trying to find a modal shift in transport and remove approximately 1 million passenger miles a year from the estate. Harlander is the starter for us in, in going on that journey to have something that's green and sustainable. So the mission's very clear. What we want to have is an operational ready vehicle that can run and deliver last mile connectivity integrated to the existing public transport network uh, on the estate. And, and fundamentally what we want to do is show something that is operationally ready that can be used in a mixed use public environment. What we have here is a corner assembly system where you have the steering, the brakes, the power, everything is in the corner. And we have computer control looking after each corner. There's no actual mechanical connection inboard of the corner for the steering, for the brakes, for anything. So that makes it very easy for an autonomous system, since we don't have to worry about having a driver turning a steering wheel. The computers can basically talk to the corners. The corner is self-contained, does everything it needs to do, and lets the, then the computers are always monitoring. We have a computer on each corner, and we also have a main computer that talks to the other computers. So we have a lot of redundancy, we have a lot of capability. We can change the way that the system works very easily. And it just provides, as I say, a very easy, accurate way of controlling each corner for an autonomous vehicle. That whole thing would bolt into a frame that is, in fact, becomes the chassis of the vehicle. And the, other, the nice thing about it, for something like an, a, a vehicle that has to be out all the time, moving people around, if there's an issue with the corner, if the suspension were to, you know, if they hit something and the suspension breaks, you have to repair it. You can take the corner out, bolt a new corner in. Within the hour, that vehicle is back out on the road driving. We then fix the corner at our leisure. So the vehicle itself is always out on the road as much as it possibly can. So passengers aren't left waiting because we've got one less vehicle out on the road. I think what's unique about the project is, as I say, the harbour has 30 kilometres of what are fundamentally private roads and our, our own private bylaws judge what we can and cannot do on them. So the Road Traffic Act doesn't apply there. And so we have a great deal of flexibility of what we can run. But in fact, although they're private roads, they are open to the public. So the public drive on them day in, day out, and they don't even know that they're operating on the high harbour estate. So for us, that's a distinct uh, advantage over, over others in this space. I think fundamentally, there is a challenge. When we looked at this across the UK, there's a real challenge on last mile connectivity. Uh, it commercially doesn't make sense for businesses to run that today using a driver. So this fully unattended autonomous solution is something that really has to be proved out, we feel. And we feel, like I say, on the Harbour Estate with our setup, with the commitment of our board, with the setup of our infrastructure, with the, the, the bylaws that we have in play, we'll be able to show it in a real live mixed use environment that this can work uh, tied into the existing public transport network. So it's something that can be relatively easily replicated. And what we'd like to see is a blueprint to come out of this that can be used elsewhere. I mean, fundamentally, that's what needs to come out of this. You're bringing together a consortium of people and you have a coalition of the willing to run this, but there is always a pressure on, on the commercial side of this. We in the harbour have a, a, an enormous commitment to capital expenditure right across the estate from film studios, the construction of new offices, new, uh, new residential apartments, so there's always a commitment or a competition for money. We're able to do this because there is part funding for that. So it's a shared pain almost an experience and risk. And I think that's the same for all the consortium members. There's a real willingness to do that. And with the right support, it doesn't just benefit ourselves as a consortium, the individual members, but the UK as a whole. This is the first piece for us. So this 1.3 mile fix on that last mile connectivity, we already have phase two, phase three, phase four planned out. So we are looking at that today. Then you have other connectivity in the state, connectivity to park and ride solutions that we're gonna introduce, and then connectivity to our cruise terminal. And we have 170 odd cruise ships coming every year. So that, and then even the airport that exists in our state, there could be connectivity uh, in that as well. And what we wanna see is that move from the harbor itself out into the wider city framework and further afield. So that's what success will look like for us.